I searched the web to find the funniest videos of Pierre Polyev and you can see that Pierre Polyev actually loves his job. So that's why he's doing a great job. And I searched the web, even the dark web, and I found every single video where Pierre, in my opinion, was really funny. If you're new to the channel, don't you dare subscribe. And don't you dare to leave a comment or like the video. I'm telling you, man, don't do it. Their very first infrastructure project, their very first infrastructure project was to uh, install a, a doorknob in the prime minister's office when they took when they took office, Mr. Speaker. You know how Justin Trudeau uh, likes to spend money that's not his. So I'm just assuming here that this doorknob installation probably cost millions. So I'm having a little trouble remembering what exactly the job that the leader of the opposition had before getting into politics. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, we have a plan to fight climate change. We have a plan to continue to move forward on supporting Canadians with a grocery rebate, with a growing economy, with great middle class jobs. Uh, we're delivering health care supports for Canadians from coast to coast to coast, delivering dental care that has helped 300,000 kids uh, access dental care over the past number of months, including 1,100 in his own writing. Uh, Mr. Speaker, we will continue to be there for Canadians. Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Yes, and uh, yes, and he left right in the middle of the semester, and I'm having trouble remembering why. Oh! Now, Mr. Speaker. So what Pierre is referring to here is when Justin Trudeau was accused of doing things with a minor or something like that, so he had to quit his job. Not only does the incompetent finance minister not know the inflation target, she doesn't know that you lock in low rates when you have the chance. Remember the prime minister was saying, don't worry, we can double the national debt because interest rates are low, yep. Glenn. Problem is, I told him at the time that they should lock in those rates for 10 years or 30 years with long-term bonds. It turns out they didn't do that, and now $400 billion of that debt will roll over into these higher rates, forcing Canadians to spend more on interest than on health care. Why did he hire the worst mortgage broker in the world to be our finance minister? Am I the only one who's under the impression not only is Chrissy Freeland, like, stupid, but she's... She looks like she's high. We're leveraging transit funding to build more homes. We're launching a housing design catalog. He's announcing a catalog, everybody. <laughs> hey, everybody. Give him a round of applause. Come on, give him a round of applause. <laughs> you can't afford a home. You might end up in a tent. Your rent is doubled. But hey, you've got a brand new catalog. <laughs> Speaker, the question was, will he build 550,000 new homes, yes or no? What is this catalog going to do to help the housing crisis? Look at these houses that you can't afford. Recently, his finance minister was confronted about the plan in the budget to fund a $2 billion to a company that does not exist. And the finance minister, when she heard that allegation, said that is Absolutely false. It's not two billion. It's fifteen billion. Um. <laughs> it's not two billion. It's fifteen. I don't know why I thought this was really funny, but at the same time, it's not funny because Christian Freeland was actually going to give money, fifteen billion dollars, to a company that does not exist. The official opposition have the courage to do that. The honourable leader of the official opposition. Yes. Is that clear? <laughs> yes. It was a d desire to look into the issue, but we also know how to set priorities, and we need to, because when you're examining liberal wrongdoing and corruption, it's like drinking from a fire hose. Right? <laughs> so you have to start. <laughs> the question we always have is, where do you start? Where do you start? So we started with McKinsey, because that's where most of the smoke is, and that's where we're likely to find the first flame. But we are prepared to examine all of the $15 billion plus of massive high price contracting out that this government does. And I can tell you, we will cut that waste when I'm Prime Minister. Yeah. Seriously? I don't understand how people are still voting for the Liberals when you have all these scandals surrounding this administration right now. 
the prime minister who chose his governor general, who chose everyone basically who can actually take him out of government, is not being accused of anything. Not corrupt at all. So who do the Conservatives think was the better economic manager? Prime Minister Harper or their new leader? <laughs> the Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Well, we were terrific economic managers together. <laughs> we will be again. in on answering questions, Mr. Speaker. We'll be doing more of it when we're in government soon. But in fact, EI payments have gone... Imagine being part of the government who tripled Canada's national debt, thinking the budget was going to balance itself, and trying to call out the former government for doing a bad job. Leader of the opposition. No, they had a big party with other people's money. The only problem is most people weren't invited to the party. Uh, the We Charity was invited. They got yeah. a half billion dollars. The Arrive scam contractors were invited. They got millions of dollars of contracts, in, in many cases, to do no work. And many of the dollars are still under unaccounted for. Of course, uh, other liberal insiders got the money. Of course, even prisoners got Serb checks. That's how they racked up a half trillion dollars in inflationary deficits that have bid up the cost of the goods we buy and the interest we pay. Again, will they realize that the money's out and the party's over? Here, here. Yeah. The Honorable Minister of Tourism. Trudeau surrounds himself with idiots like Christia Freeland, and then he can blame his cabinet for doing a bad job, making him, making him look like he has nothing to do with it. You chose these people, so you're as responsible, first of all, and we know that you're the one calling the shots. You're the Justin Trudeau. And the cost of the said object goes up. For example, he spent $70 billion on affordable housing to make housing prices go up by almost $300,000. Wow. And many members of this House were not even born when liberals first started to promising to make daycare affordable. Yeah. Mr. Speaker, when will he realize that more dollars chasing Fewer goods means higher prices, and that the more he spends, the higher the cost. They bring back a program that ends up doing nothing and the prices of the homes go up. So what is this money actually being used for? No one knows. The right honorable speaker, the member for Carleton, and indeed the conservative approach on the economy is well known by Canadians, and that's why it was so... Prime Minister caused this inflation crisis. Even Mark Carney, who will be uh, the successor to uh, the current uh, Liberal leader, is saying that inflation is a homegrown problem. He's right. It's caused by the half trillion dollars of inflationary deficits that have bid up the cost of the goods we buy and the interest that we pay. said that inflation is domestically generated. So is the so has the current governor of the Bank of Canada. And now, after a half trillion dollars of inflationary deficits. The finance minister is pretending that she believes, like conservatives, that government spending is driving this crisis in the first place. Isn't it ironic that the solution to the problem the government will have to pursue that wants to make life more affordable is to do exactly the opposite of what they have been doing for the last seven years? Everyone who spends money like that knows damn well it's going to cause inflation. If they don't, they're incompetent. Nanos poll. The largest share of Canadians in recorded history say they are worse off than a year ago. What did the NDP do as a solution to that? They voted to raise home heating bills. Yes, them along with their costly coalition partners and the Liberal Party voted twice to make home heating more expensive by tripling, tripling and tripling the carbon tax. The Liberals understand that the purpose of the carbon tax is to make home heating more expensive. Will they tell the NDP that that is, in fact, the plan? <laughs> Time Canadians will have to continue to drive to the United States where these medications are widely available for parents. But back here at home, uh, the Prime Minister's half trillion dollars of inflationary deficits have given us a 40-year high in... Prime Minister, Mr. Trudeau, uh, Mr. Speaker... One thing that the Prime, Prime Minister wants to know about is himself. That's why he can't help but using his own name right here on the floor of the House of Commons. And, Mr. Speaker, it's why the only concern he had about a business closing is... He 
I wouldn't even be surprised that Justin Trudeau has conversations with himself in front of the mirror at, in front of the mirror at home. Oh, great. Just what we need. A new government program to help us pay the cost of a government tax. <laughs> Don't worry if you live in the countryside of Atlantic Canada, where 40% of people now live in energy poverty after this government has been in power for 70 years. There's a new government program coming. So you need not worry about freezing in the dark as this new tax comes in. That's what they want people to believe. Canadians are not stupid. Canadians are not polluters. They have to heat their homes homes and travel in a big cold right. country, will this government cancel its plan to triple, triple, triple? You should take that issue up. Yesterday it did, at which point Liberals said, no, this is a matter for the Speaker. When we explained the contradiction, the chair of the committee jammed his fist in front of the camera and suspended the meeting altogether. So here we are back in front of the Speaker. Madam Speaker, can you help us get these documents unblacked out? Neville. This happened during the pandemic, and it's one of the funniest videos of Pierre Polyev, hands down. So with that, uh, I'm suspending the meeting until further notice. Uh, Mr. Chair, point of order, meeting, point of meeting, order, meeting point suspended. of order, point meeting, of order, point of order, suspended. You, point of order, Chair, meeting point of order, suspended. point of order. You do not have a authorization to shut down the meeting. You do not have majority to do that. I have the you authorization. Cannot. I you have cannot. The Pierre, I'm not going to argue you with you. Wrong. The authorization you to suspend you the meeting, wrong. and hold I am vote. suspending have the, the meeting. Have the courage to hold a vote. I am Don't suspending do, the meeting, and when we do, when we deal with this motion, Pierre, we vote. will deal with it have properly. Have the courage to hold a vote. So the Don't meeting shut is, us down. The meeting no, is suspended. No, you can't shut us down. The meeting goes on without you. I will be happy to take on the chair. The meeting will. The meeting will continue going on, and I will begin by taking a list. Does anybody wish to be on the list in order to speak? Madam Clerk, we have any speakers? The I'm ordering it. I will. Uh, I'm or looking Ms. at Jensen. the status. Ms. Jensen, of uh, Ms. Jensen, uh, please uh, go ahead. You have the floor. Yes, um, I'm very, very concerned about. No, how... you do not. No, you do not have the floor, Ms. But... Jensen. I am the Sorry, chair. Mr. I Wayne. ordered the meeting be Mr. suspended. Mr. Easter, until, you're out of order. You are out of on, order. On you are out of order. You, until you've removed such yourself time from the meeting. As I sort you have out removed this yourself. Is... It's not. Jean Charest tried to become the leader of the Conservative Party by criticizing the Conservative Party. Your name as a party that was liberal, it was your track record of more debt, higher taxes, and more expensive government that was yeah. liberal, Mr. Charest. You can try to run from your record all you want. But the reality is, that's what you did when you were there. Yeah. And it is not just your record on fiscal conservatism issues. You blocked shale gas development. Now you claim you've changed your mind. You brought in, you brought in a long gun registry after we got rid of it going after farmers and hunters instead of inner city criminals. I could go down the list of all the liberal policies that you brought in that you're trying to hide from today, but we don't have enough time to go through them all. I am a true conservative. I've stood for the same things my entire life. I'm not just putting on temporarily a blue shirt to cover up a red shirt underneath it in order to take over the party. Thank you, Mr. Polyev. Let's go to you, Mr. Shrey. No, we, don't, we, don't, we don't have to go down a long list. Why did you oppose the fact that I reduced income I taxes? Didn't. And to, yes, you were part of a government that opposed. You can't rewrite history, Pierre. You can't rewrite the facts to politics. fit your rhetoric. You in were in the history. House. You were part of the government that opposed the about? fact that I reduced income taxes. What are you talking yes about? Yes or no? No, I did not. I okay. was not. I, I never commented on okay, your income. Well, fine. Frankly, Mr. Charette, you didn't cut income tax, so there was no income tax cut to oppose. You raised taxes. You raised consumption Excuse taxes. Me? You raised health taxes. Excuse you raised every tax, and you canceled out any Chair. minuscule reductions Chair. that Chair. would otherwise have if been you, realized. If, not, if you can't and get furthermore, that right. Furthermore, if Mr. Charest, if you can't Mr. get Charest, that right, how Mr. can you Charest, get the rest like? Mr. Charest, he reduced Mr. income taxes, Mr. Charest, and the credit rating agencies Mr. actually said that that's what allowed Quebecers to come through the Great Recession much better than anyone else. If Mr. you're Charest, ready, to, if you, you're you, ready Mr. to misrepresent Charest, those facts, you, you left, what other you facts left, are you? You left Quebec, the most indebted province in all of Canada. 
That is your record on finance. You raised the sales tax. No one will trust you in an election on inflation because you raised inflation when you raised the sales tax. I cut the GST. That's what the Harper government did. And oh. if you take a minute to stop attacking the Harper government, which is the party that all of us are supposed to be part of, then maybe you would recognize all of the good that that man did for this country. Thank you, Mr. Apparently nothing. You know, he finally kicked out the operative from Beijing after two years of knowing about this. CSIS informed the Prime Minister's National Security Advisor in July of 2021. Two years ago, he did absolutely nothing. It wasn't until leadership, as he so famously said. Is it because, as he said, he admired Fidel Castro? Is it because the dictatorship in Beijing gave $140,000 to the Trudeau Foundation? Is it because he now knows that Beijing interfered in two consecutive elections to help him win, and he's just happy as a clam to have them interfere one more time to give him an advantage? Is he prepared to put his own electoral interests above our national security? Is that how bad it has become? Well, we know that he has voted against the creation of a, in our recent conservative motion, the creation of a foreign influence registry, a registry that exists in the United States and in Australia. It is necessary to register if you want to lobby for the food bank. Why should you not have to make yourself known if you are taking paid interests from foreign dictatorships to manipulate Canadian politics today? It is just common sense. And Corruption at its finest, man. That's why we want to bring it home. This would not apply to any race or group or nationality of Canadians. It would apply exclusively to people of any race who take financial payment from a foreign dictatorship. And that is something that can be done in a manner that is respectful of human rights. The Prime Minister knows that, but he does not want the truth to come out. He voted against a public inquiry, instead relying on two former Trudeau Foundation members to do all of the so-called investigating, a foundation that received $140,000 of money from Beijing out of 40 million people. He expects us to believe that the only two people in all of Canada qualified to look into this matter are members of the Trudeau Foundation. Madam Speaker, that is not credible, especially when it was his own brother that facilitated the donation coming from Beijing. We, he voted against closing the foreign police, police stations. That it, we, the, closing those stations was part of our motion that he and his party voted against, and his party voted against kicking out all the operatives that have been attacking our people. Madam Speaker. Trudeau knows damn well that he won a bunch of ridings in Ontario because of this corruption right here. This election interference only helped him. Contributed to by the regime in Beijing. Why does the Prime Minister keep making statements of falsehood about his involvement? Well, I did look up the word inactive, and you know what it does not include? Getting the donors of the Trudeau Foundation to pay for your vacation. It does not include getting members of the Trudeau Foundation to be appointed as the election interference watchdog. It does not include appointing a rapporteur to look into that same interference, who is an act, who was an active member of the Trudeau Foundation, and it does not include having a brother who facilitated the donation from a foreign dictatorship. How does the Prime Minister reconcile his inactive involvement with all of those activities? Man, imagine a world where the Prime Minister gets vacations paid by his donors. Even a plane, even a boat. The Minister can't believe he's having to explain to the leader of the NDP, talking down to a member of his own coalition government just demonstrates how arrogant and out of touch this Prime Minister has become. Today, for example, he'll hop on his private jet and fly, fly off on vacation to hang out with the stars and give speeches, uh, self-important and self-indulgent speeches at Canadian taxpayers' expense, all the while. He's putting in place a 41 cent a liter carbon tax that will cost the average family $1,500 more. Why doesn't he axe the trip and axe the tax? When he said uh, 900 and something dollars, I thought for a moment that that was the price of his New York hotel room. I thought, no, that can't be true. It'll be in the thousands. Like the food that he had on that plane that cost $220,000. But Mr. Speaker, he's spreading disinformation again. He promised he was going to censor 
misinformation? Why doesn't he censor himself? Because look at the information coming from the parliamentary budget officer he appointed, which demonstrates that the average Canadian will spend at least $1,500 more in taxes than they get back in rebates. The Liberals call this report a prop. It's from the parliamentary budget officer, the one they appointed. They're called facts. Will he finally listen to them? He has the proof in his hands and the report was made by liberals that he appointed, but it's misinformation. It's now clear why he wants to censor the internet, Mr. Speaker. He doesn't want Canadians to go and find out which of us is telling the truth. It would be very easy for them. I encourage them to Google a distributional analysis of the federal fuel charge on the 2030 emissions reduction plan. Page three. If you're out there watching, Google it now. You will see the Prime Minister is deliberately misinforming the House of Commons by stating that Canadians will be better off when clearly the average household will pay more than $1,500 more in taxes than they get back. Would the Prime Minister like me to have one of the pages send this document over so that he can read it? He's going to have to try and convince Canadians of it. All the fancy rhetoric he tries to use will not fool Canadians. The reality is Canadians know environment and economy go together. The big task I have ahead is cleaning up the mess that he will be... ...have doubled. Why is it that the more he spends, the worse things get? The right honourable Prime Minister. After adding $100 billion of new debt before the first case of COVID, half trillion dollars of debt before the Russian invasion of Ukraine, doubling the debt, adding more debt than all other prime ministers combined, now the prime minister's government is saying they're going to cut $9 billion and even bring in my pay-as-you-go law to find savings for every new dollar of spending. But wait, they now admit that deficits add, of inf- add fuel to the inflationary fire, but can we really trust the arsonists who lit the fire to put it out? <laughs> Do you realize that Justin Trudeau added more debt to the deficit than all the other prime ministers of Canada combined in the history of Canada? The Honourable Government House... What would we have cut? We would have cut the $54 million Arrive Can Act. Yeah. Billion dollars for the WE organization. We said they should never have given wage subsidies to wealthy corporations that were capable of paying out here, bonuses here. and dividends to their executives. That's an easy question to answer. In fact, 200 billion of the 500 billion in new debt in the last two years had nothing to do That's with right. COVID at all. And inflation was already spiraling out of control well before the Russian invasion of Ukraine. So they should stop blaming everyone else and tell us how they're going to re- re- reverse the inflation That's right. that they caused. Here, here. It is true that dumb governments that ran massive deficits all around the world and printed money to pay for it all have inflation problems. Countries like Switzerland that had low or no deficits have low or no inflation. This was a choice. This government decided to spend a half trillion dollars inflating the cost of living, more dollars chasing fewer goods, leads always to higher prices. And now we have 40-year highs in inflation. But how... Speaker, uh, the question was about the SNC-Lavalin criminal investigation, not the Rivecan app criminal investigation. I can, I can understand there's so many criminal investigations. <laughs> can get confused sometimes, but uh, he's sure governmental affairs minister who was found guilty of breaking the ethics law and the prime minister who's twice been found guilty of breaking the ethics law saying how are we going to quit getting found guilty i know we'll appoint my sister-in-law as the ethics commissioner what a plan it is foolproof mr speaker my question though is when are they the problem is pretty soon they're going to run out of family and friends and after they do how are they going to avoid their next conviction for breaking the law Corruption at its finest, man. Sir, recipients was the question. How many? Minister. Nine million Canadians supported by Sir. Member for Carleton. So the only number we're getting was nine million when I asked how many people took the Sir that didn't live in Canada. Uh, if, is, if nine million isn't the right number, which number is? Speaker, Minister. Maybe the honorable member would like to know about SEBA that helped over 898,000 small businesses survive. Member for Carleton. 
is the why is the minister hiding the the, the, number, the true number of people not living in Canada who got the serve? Minister, following a steep decline of 27 percent in the first half of the 2020, corporate profits rebounded to 61 percent above pre-pandemic levels. Member for Carleton, could we replace the minister with a t- cassette tape that we could just hit play on? I guess that's a question for the minister. Minister. Mr. Speaker, I'm sure there's all kinds of technological advancements available, but I can tell you that uh, the wage subsidy helped over 450,000 employers. Member for Carlton. 5.3 million. Is there a technological advance that might help the minister answer the question? Minister. Mr. Speaker, the rent subsidy helped more than 213,000 businesses stay afloat. That's good for all Canadians. Member for Carlton. Can the the officials who are here today hand the minister a new script? He seems to be uh, reading one. Pierre right here is having a conversation with ChatGPT. We're across the way to understand that our government helped 9 million Canadians who lost their job through the service. They hand him a speech that they wrote for him, a bureaucrat wrote for him, and he just stays glued to it. Why don't we just elect a robot to read off these speeches that are written by bureaucrats in the finance department because that robot at least would stick more tightly to the script than he has. If he doesn't actually have any answers to the factual questions, is it possible that he could be replaced with a robot? (laughs) Minister. Mr. Speaker, it is unfortunate that the member opposite doesn't like the answers that I'm... For Carleton. What has been the inflation rate for the price of land uh, in the last year? Minister. I'm glad to um, talk about inflation because we know that it's a global phenomenon. Member for Carleton. Land prices are a global phenomenon. Does the minister realize that the land we have here doesn't come from the rest of the globe? It's already here. He said, and I quote, as soon as you do that, inflation goes up by exactly the same amount. Right? Right. (laughs) Why didn't I think about it. <laughs> goodness, spending money you don't have actually causes inflation. He's in the middle of having epiphanies, has he also realized that budgets don't balance themselves? <laughs> that they hadn't gone in years or even decades. But he stands against it with some, uh, you know, made-up excuse around inflation when delivering <laughs> services delivers for Canadians. He's serious too. He's calling his own words a made-up excuse, like. <laughs> That's so stupid. If he's serious right now, Justin Trudeau, he's actually like so far gone that he will never be back. He calls his own words a made-up excuse, Mr. Speaker. You can't make this stuff up. He said that when people ask him, can you send us more benefits or send us an extra thousand dollars a month? Well, he responds, as soon as you do that, inflation goes up by exactly the same amount. Right? 